Welcome back. Now, let's uh, go back uh, to a guest that we tried to catch a little bit earlier on, Professor Dirk Kotze, who's in our Pretoria studios. And what we wanted to explore with him, of course, were the dramatic developments this morning. Uh, the Hawks uh, raiding the Premier of the Free State, Ace Mahashule's offices, as well as uh, the Provincial Department of Agriculture, all to do uh, with this uh, Frida Farm Dairy Project, uh, where it seems that... Uh, hundreds of millions of rand have been um, corruptly taken out of the system. Uh, let's talk to Professor Dirk Kutzer now. I think we've got a better line. Thanks so much for joining us. Um, dramatic political uh, developments taking place. I mean, most people will look at it and say that this is the police doing their job, but there certainly is a political overtone to this. Yes, that is indeed so. Um, if we look back at the, the last two years, for example, the Hawks were in, in very similar situations in the past when they investigated the former Prem, uh, uh, Minister of Finance, Pravin Gordon, the SARS officials, um, as well as others also. So I think one has to be slightly cautious uh, with what is happening at the moment. It very much coincides with the aftermath of the ANC's national conference um, I, I, I can concede it very much that uh, the incoming new ANC leadership really wants to demonstrate that they want to make a difference. And therefore these developments squarely fits within a, what, what they have in mind. But I think what, what is at the same time important is, is that there should not be a repetition of what has happened in the past. And I think to some extent one should be cautious that this is not playing out in the media before the investigation has been concluded. Because the public can very easily reach conclusions about this. And if it does not in the end materialize, it can undermine ultimately the credibility and the legitimacy of, of the walks and the NPA and the criminal justice system in, in general. So I think to, to, to some extent we have to be cautious the way in which this is approached. Um, but in general, I think there's a lot of optimism that there's a break with the past, that there at, at least there's some investigations taking place. Um, and it looks as if the criminal justice system is taking the, the, the evidence and the accusations about uh, state capture now quite seriously. If it is true, for example, that uh, Mr. Gupta received 10 million rand, I mean, it can only be a corrupt transaction because there's been no reason why he would get any money from a project in the free state uh, that's supposed to benefit local farmers. So, and it would be quite easy to see how the money left the province's coffers and went into his personal bank account. That is indeed so, and, and I think this is the type of investigation that the Hawks are doing now, um, and the follow-up, the, the evidence that they are looking for now, the documentation with the trades on, on the offices today of the, of the Premier as well as the Agricultural Department. But in the end, it still all must be presented to a court of law, um, and they must be able to demonstrate that there is indeed, or there has been, um, criminal offences committed. Um, so I think on the one hand, this, this, the public in general is very much, I would say, optimistic or encouraged by these developments. Um, and because for so long it was, the was impression was created that um, uh, these persons that are allegedly involved or whose names were appeared in, in emails and other forms of evidence, for example, the public protector's report, that they were sort of enjoying indemnity almost, as if they are immune against any any form of investigation. While the criminal justice system was, was, was used for exactly the opposite purposes, and that is to protect them against any form of, uh, of, of ev providing of evidence um, or other forms of uh, exposing them to what has happened in the past. And I think what one should also take into account that this is not the be all and end all. What we have heard this, what experienced this week, is also the announcement of the terms of reference of the Judicial Commission of Inquiry, and then at the same time the parliamentary process that is unfolding um, in the Portfolio Committee on Public uh, Enterprises and especially ESCOM. So there is a convergence taking place at this stage of different initiatives or different streams. Um, that are all dealing in one way or the other with the, the aspects of state capture that were revealed over time. 
The new president of the ANC is uh, talking very tough and in fact uh, this, this morning the uh, ANC's uh, spokesperson, one of their spokespersons, uh, spoke about how the ANC is not going to tolerate any kind of corruption and that, um, that anybody involved in the corruption will be dealt with. This does put them in a difficult situation now because there are a number of high profile figures whose names keep coming up. This Frida project, what will they then do or what would the future be for people like um, Ace Mahashule and Moussa Benzizwane at this time? What do the ANC do? Do they sit and wait or do they say the Integrity Commission says that once you are facing allegations, we bring you before our Integrity Commission and interrogate you? I think the position of the Secretary General is going to become highly complex for the ANC because the, the Secretary General is the most important or the most highly placed person in the ANC's organizational structure in Lutuli House, over and above obviously the, chair, the, the President and the Deputy President. But, so it's in critical position for the ANC. At the same time, the ANC National Conference took decisions now to enhance the, the powers of the integrity uh, committee uh, with, within the ANC in order to send a very strong message about um, dealing with corruption, with unethical conduct um, and generally with uh, criminal conduct within the ANC. Um, at another consideration which complicates it even more is the fact that the Secretary General Ace Magasule is emerging now as the de facto most prominent person, almost leader of the Lamini Zuma group that were f emerged over the past year or more before the national conference. And I think from an ANC's unity point of view, it will cause serious concerns within the ANC if some steps are taken against him now, um, because it can easily be seen as something, some form of retribution from the, from the Dramaposa side also. I mean, some people can even ask questions, why focus on the Frieda dairy farm uh, acquisitions and not on the issues re referring to ESCOM or any of the other uh, evidence that have emerged? And why specifically on something in which very strong supporters of President Zuma and Lamini Zuma can become implicated. So these are the exceptionally important or difficult complications that are awaiting the ANC. Um, and it will really depend on the wisdom of the new leadership how to deal with it. Because as, as I said, one of the key considerations before and during and now even after the national conference is how to make sure that there are no fractures within the ANC. The same applies also to, to the KwaZulu-Natal and also now with these um, provincial executive task teams that were established. Um, and, and that in itself I think is going to be a major test for the leadership of uh, the, the new ANC president Cyril Ramaphosa. Right, and perhaps a final question. Uh, we're hearing rumblings in the northwest province. Uh, Supra Mahumapilo, the uh, Premier there, supporting uh, uh, um, um, uh, the, the Premier of uh, the Free State. And before you know, these elections, we'd heard about this uh, grouping called the Premier League. And one of them is the Deputy President of the party now. Ace Mahashule, we see, um, is going to have to navigate these waters. But there seems to be movement in the northwest as well. There's a grouping that's gathering there saying that they want to remove uh, Premier Supra Mahumapilo. Is his future in danger? I don't think it is immediately in, in danger. He, the Northwest was before the, the national conference, clearly a province that was organizational, organizationally not in a good health. If we look at, for example, how many of the branches were disqualified who, who couldn't attend the, the national conference um, because of, of internal organizational problems, it's clear that the province itself is not in, in good health. So it, it reflects on the, on the Premier and the provincial uh, chairperson also. But I think what will become in a moment for decision will be just before next year's national and provincial election, where there will have to be decisions taken about who's going to be 
the, the, the main candidates of the ANC in the province. I think at the same time what we are seeing is, is the, the, the disappearance to a large extent of the Premier League and those uh, around Dr. Tlamini Zuma. Some, uh, something which for me is, is, is very much at this stage un, unclear is, for example, where is David Mabusa? Where is he in this? He's absolutely quiet and he's not involved in, in trying to manage or to deal with this matter, these matters that are emerging now. And what we are therefore in a sense seeing is the unraveling of the Premier League with David Mabusa, who is not clearly not part of that group anymore. Um, the Aisma Gashule, who in a sense is under pressure now, um, but maybe the only remaining element of that group, and then the Northwest, who is to a large extent because they are also unrepresented as KwaZulu Natal in the top six. Um, that to, to some extent I think there is some a sort of a backlash within the province exactly because of the direction in which Supreme Maumar Pelu took the province and that some may accuse him that he actually was the cause of the under-representation of the province in the new leadership. Professor Dirk Kutzer, that's where we're going to leave it. Thank you very much indeed uh, for giving us your insights this evening. Professor Dirk Kutzer speaking to us uh, live from Pretoria, saying that the new leadership of the ANC certainly has some uh, difficult waters, uh, challenging waters uh, to navigate in the coming weeks and months.